Well, why don't you tell the story, Stu? <laughs> I don't even know the story. You are the one obsessed with I the story. I don't know what you're talking about. Apparently, he had a, allegedly. Allegedly. Thank you for saying that. A bit of an I accident. I don't think this is true, and I mean that. I don't think this is true. Oh, I think people can trust you and, and what you say your opinion is on something. Certainly, you didn't lead the show on a Monday with... A, uh, Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <sighs> Twitter users explained President Joe Biden's unusually long visit with the Pope by claiming it was a result of a bathroom emergency. <laughs> what? Senior CBS White House correspondent apparently wa- raised the question when she noted that President Biden's visit en route to the G20 summit in Glasgow had been noticeably longer than those of former presidents Donald Trump and Barack Obama. The Vatican shared that President Biden, Pope Francis, met privately for an hour and 15 minutes, which is a long time for the Pope to spend with any world leader. President Obama's uh, one-on-one meeting lasted 50 minutes. President Trump was 30 minutes. Uh, Although she left out the fact that Biden, the only Catholic among the three, might have had more to discuss with the Pope because they had the same faith. The rumor appeared uh, to start a short time after that, with a tweet from a former Republican Nevada chairwoman, Amy, what, Tarkankian, who claimed without presenting any evidence that Biden's possible accident was the topic of much discussion in Rome. The world around Rome is that uh, the word around Rome is that Biden's meeting with the Pope was unusually long because he had a bit of a bathroom accident at the Vatican and it had to be addressed prior to him leading. Uh, leaving. I know we joke about this often, but this is an actual rumor going around Rome right now. So <laughs> it is a unverified actual rumor going around. Because of that, hashtag poopy pants Biden, hashtag shart week, <laughs> uh, hashtag poopy gate were trending on social media this, <laughs> this weekend. And I think that's wrong. And it was wrong for Stu to bring it up. See, these things don't catch on unless there's an element of, of truth behind them. And I think yeah, this, one, this, this is, one would prove that one wrong. <laughs> well, <laughs> there may not be an element of truth in it, it but it, there are so many people who would believe such a scenario. You that know, it, it, I, can I tell, can, would you say what you actually honestly said? This is how it happened. He came in and I said, good morning, Stu. And he said, good morning. I said, the president poopy pants, huh? And he's like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and I told the story and you're comedic response was I you don't remember <laughs> you well you had a setup thing I don't remember what it was no yeah uh I said uh, you said I do you believe it and I said no oh. I, I don't believe it and I was being serious and he, he said why not right right <laughs> right and yeah. that's a joke mm-hmm. but it's also yeah. half serious mm-hmm. because we all know that he is not in the best of mental shape and it could happen and it would be horrible i and i don't think it did i really don't think it did but there's well there's no there's no real evidence right of this well there is a republican political operative that started it that well is saying <laughs> right that, that that's a legitimate a rumor, rumor. A legitimate rumor. What is a legitimate rumor? I don't know. I like that phrase, though. Okay. A legitimate rumor is one that I guess is actually being spread around. Right. It's not. You're not just making something up. Correct. Uh, yeah, you know, from ma- magic dust. Correct. Well, and one that probably is is believable in some sense. Okay. So here is here's one reason why President Poopy Pants is taken seriously by some people because when he was late for a press conference this weekend, here is the answer he actually gave. Cut four. Please sit down. I apologize for keeping you waiting. We were uh, playing with elevators. (laughs) Long story. At any rate. Uh, Oh. (laughs) You were playing. Did you go into the elevator and just push all the buttons and go, look, it's like a Christmas tree. Yeah. What did you? Full elf. He went full elf. What what do you mean you were playing with the elevators? That's what makes Shark Week actually seem like maybe it's possible. Right. People believe that that this could happen because it seems like all of his other activities. Correct. Are consistent with a person who would do that in a meeting with the Pope. And it is something also (laughs) that... 
Something also that happens when you get into this position. Here he is trying to remember the the name of one of our, our biggest foes. Cut six. With regard to the disappointment, the disappointment relates to the fact that Russia and uh, and uh, and uh, mm-hmm. including China, uh, China, not only Russia, but China, China yes, basically didn't China. show up. This is like, and I don't know if anybody remembers this, I mean, but we had that feeling with George Bush, and it wasn't because George Bush was um, senile, as I pointed out years later after I had met with him personally, it was because he was processing all of the things he couldn't say and could say, and he just wasn't fast enough. And so he'd be like, and I, and I talked to uh, some people about my, uh, my, um, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, shoe. And you'd be like, what? You were struggling to find the word shoe. And that was because, you know, it's George W. Bush, but this is, you know, possibly something else, possibly something else. Now, I don't, a lot of people say (laughs) that, um, you know, there's a real good shot that it's President Poopy Pants, and that is why we're getting such bad, uh, you know, we're getting such bad policy. I don't think so. I really don't think so. I think he is there enough to know exactly what he's doing. Do you agree with that? I do agree with it. I think yeah. we're in the minority on that, maybe. I do, too. Uh, because I think he he wants to be this transfor- transformational figure. Mm-hmm. He sees himself as this, this is a big destiny moment for him, right? He's been running for president since 1847, and he finally won. Mm-hmm. And now he's in the White House, and he wants to do everything that FDR did and more. Yeah. He wants to be the transformational president. And so he's doing the things that he thinks will transform America because he's honestly convinced that these are the right things to do. Remember, George W. Bush was like, I got to violate the free market, to save the free market. What? That doesn't make any sense at all. But what did he say? What did one of the advisors say? It was put to him, you are either going to be Hoover or Roosevelt. So it turns out, mm, it's a little like Hoover. But that's the same kind of options being presented to this president. Remember what George W. Bush told me. When the president sits in this chair, he will get the same advice that all the presidents have gotten, and he will realize that there is nothing really he can do except what the last president was doing. And he made that to he said that to me like a source of like, hey, don't worry. It's gonna be great. Hillary Clinton gets in, she's just going to do what I was doing. Okay, that, no, that's really frightening. No. That's why President Trump was so hated by the elites, because he'd just say, get out. He was, he was going to do what he wanted to do. Biden is the exact opposite of Donald Trump. Biden is doing what his advisors want him to do, and his advisors are nuts. They are nuts. They are on the radical fringes, and he's listening to them. So, wait, but that doesn't that stand in uh, against Joe Biden being in control, as we were just arguing? Well, it, just as much as it, it uh, argues against George Bush being in control. No, but, you're, but you said that he was just listening to his advisors. I don't think he's just listening to his advisors. He's put these people, first of all, in these positions. I don't think he has. But yes, okay. And he is, uh, sh- yes, taking their advice and, and choosing from a, a plate of options, a mm-hmm. menu of options. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, I think, you know, he's, I, we have to give him, I would argue, blame yes. for really acting like a hardcore ideological president over yes. and over and over again. He's not a guy that just seems to be like going back to, to, to normal it standards depends, and practices. But it depends on how isolated he is. Listen, mm. listen to this from Chuck Todd, and then we're going to take a quick break, and then I'll explain what I mean on isolation. Go ahead. We have a brand-new NBC News poll out this morning that's filled with some scary news for the Democrats. The overarching message, Americans have lost their confidence in President Biden and their optimism for the country, at least they have right now. Just 22% of adults say we're headed in the right direction. 
a shocking 71 percent say we're on the wrong track. And that includes a near majority of Democrats who are saying that. President Biden's approval Mm. rating stands at a dismal 42 percent versus 54 percent who disapprove. Mm. Believe it or not, just two months ago, Mr. Biden was in positive territory, 49 percent approving, 48 percent disapproving. So what's pulling down the president's numbers? Well, look at this set of numbers. Just 37 percent say he has the ability right now to handle a crisis versus nearly a majority who say he does not. 37 percent also say he's competent and effective as president. 50 percent disagree with that description. Jeez. Okay, so what did they say in the round table? I want to show you how disconnected they are. Once Ch- uh, uh, Chuck Todd showed the real clear politics and 538 presidential approval track- uh, trackers that said the same thing, that we are, the, the American people, including Democrats, are saying, uh-uh, we're, we're headed off a cliff here. They asked, why? Why is this happening? The Democratic pollster, now remember, these are the people that will be around George, uh, I mean, uh, would be around Joe, Joe Biden because he's got ideologues around him and ideologues will look for any kind of reason to excuse it. Democratic pollster Cornell Belcher noted that much of the slide in Biden's approval has come from young Democrats who took to the streets and marched a year ago and they aren't interested in roads and bridges. They're marching for justice and racial equality. That's why we have to act on that. So if that's what you're hearing from your advisor and you're not hearing the truth that people are like, "Uh, no, we're freaked out by the schools. We're freaked out by what you're doing. We're freaked out by the vaccine mandate. But you're being told your only number, your numbers are only softening because they want more radical agenda. You're not going to be able to. I mean, that's why Rasputin was so dangerous to the czar. Because he was giving them a completely different understanding of what the people were actually saying. I'm not excusing Joe Biden. I'm just saying that I don't think he's in control. I think he's in control of his faculties enough to know what's going on, not to quickly respond to anything, but enough to know what's going on. I think he is really tired probably all the time, and so he's not doing the things that a normal president would do. And he surrounded himself by radicals who were advising him and telling him lies. And the, the idea that this drop is coming from young Democrats, I mean, there may be some erosion there, no. but that's not the problem. I mean, no. Hillary Clinton lost independence by four points in 2016. Joe Biden won independence in 2020 by 13 points. Here, He's now minus 16 with the same people. Right. And here's and here's why. It's not young Democrats. Because people voted for stability and calm. They wanted to go back to normal. That's the way Joe Biden sold his candidacy. Correct. Enough of this. We're just going to get back to being all Americans and we're just going to go back to normal and it's going to be calm. That's what independence Uh, And some Democrats voted for. They didn't like him. They weren't for the progressive stuff. They just didn't like Donald Trump's chaos. And what they got (laughs) is instability and chaos. For an this is more this is more unpredictable in its chaos than I think Donald Trump was. Donald Trump, you knew who he was. You knew. When you saw something, you knew he's going to do the tomahawk chop this this weekend. (laughs) You knew it. You know it. Okay? This guy, you don't know. You Wait a minute. The president just let the FBI go after parents calling them terrorists? And he's actually saying it in a press conference? What? That's something you didn't see on the horizon. And that instability is frightening to a lot of people. Sure, and it should be. I mean, look at all the huge issues that are that have crumbled since this guy took over. I mean, obviously, Afghanistan is maybe the the, the marquee example, but uh, you, you look at the border. Is it, I mean, you know, the fact that, yep, like, we're yep. releasing, hey, maybe we'll pay $450,000 to uh, all these separated families. That sort of stuff is going on, and I think... They totally misjudge mm-hmm. what kind of effect that has on a normal human being. Like, wait, wait, we're going to do what? You know, the border is out of control. The, the prices are going up with inflation. 
And Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a catastrophe. Mm-hmm. All of these things add up to not only a, 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 a an ideological path that America doesn't want cut in, in large part. It also just leads to a completely incompetent group of people that don't know what they're doing or how to do it. So l- listen to this. This is from an ABC poll. Even among Democrats alone, fewer than half, 47 percent, think that the two bills that are now being uh, jammed down everybody's throat in Congress by the president, 47 percent think the two bills w- um, uh, will help people like them. A quarter of Democrats think that these bills would make no difference for people like them. And two in 10, 22 percent, don't know how they would impact their lives. Nearly two thirds of Republicans think the bills will hurt people like them. And so do three in 10 independents. 34 to 34, the split is evenly divided on whether they believe these bills would help or hurt the U.S. economy. Very few, 6%, think the bills would have no effect on the economy, and a quarter don't know. Democrats are more, more likely to think that legislation would help the economy if enacted uh, than Republicans and Democrats, uh, 68 uh, compared with 7% and 29%. So even the, what he's trying to push through is wildly unpopular. Even a quarter of the Democrats think that's going to hurt us. That's going to hurt us. And fewer than 50% think it's going to help. That's your legislation that you're trying to push past? That's why these numbers are so out of whack for the president.